Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 5, Part 2. In today's lesson we will be learning about taxation. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Benjamin Franklin is quoted as saying, in this world nothing can be said to be certain, except death and taxes. Why do we need taxes? First, let's look at how governments finance public expenditure. Governments have many ways that they can finance government expenditure. Options can include, borrowing from the private sector, rents from publicly owned buildings and land, admission charges, for example from public museums and monuments, revenue from the sale of some public services such as postal services and public transport, proceeds from the sale or privatization of government-owned industries and other publicly owned assets, interest charges on government loans to the private sector and overseas governments, and finally, taxes on incomes, wealth and expenditures. But teacher, I hear you say, some governments don't charge any tax. Yes, the is possible if the nation has an alternative primary source of revenue. The world has 23 countries without income taxes. Of that number, six are rich in crude oil reserves. This means they are substituting proceeds from the sale of natural resources for taxes. A good question would be, what happens when the natural resource is depleted? Additionally, just because these countries don't charge income taxes doesn't mean they offer a tax-free life. The Bahamas, for example, derives its tax revenue from value-added taxes, property taxes, casino taxes, import duties, stamp duties, and license fees. In fact, the amount of tax as a percent of government spending varies wildly by country. How are your hard-earned taxes used? Have a look at the headlines on the right and see if you can match them up with this list. They can be used too raise revenue, manage the macro economy, to reduce income inequality after tax, discourage spending on imports, to discourage the consumption and production of harmful products, and to protect the environment. How about if you were the government? What sort of tax scheme would you introduce? Would it be progressive? This is where the percentage amount increases as you earn more. In this case, the first $5,000 that everyone earns is tax-free. Then, you are taxed at 10% for your earnings between $5,000 and $20,000 and so on. This is often viewed as the fairest type of tax. Would you opt for regressive? This is when people pay a large percentage of the tax on the smallest earnings. Then tax falls the higher the amount you earn. This makes it attractive to earn lots of money, but the poor, the people that can afford it the least, get most of their income taken in taxes. Or, would you make a proportional tax? This is where everyone pays the same amount of tax, regardless of their ability to pay. Richer people being able to afford this tax easily, and poor people having to pay an amount that they can't really afford. Other things to consider, would you make your taxes national, apply to the whole country, or local? only apply to a certain state or town to address the need in that area. We also need to consider if we make them direct or indirect taxes. Let's look at these type of taxes. Firstly, direct taxes are taken directly from individuals or firms. This is directly from their incomes or wealth. The burden of a direct tax falls directly on the person or firm responsible for paying it. Indirect taxes are taxes taken indirectly from incomes when they are spent on goods and services. Indirect taxes may also be called expenditure taxes or outlay taxes. First, let's look at direct taxes. Types of direct taxes are Personal income tax Corporation or profits tax Capital gains tax Wealth taxes, for example inheritance and property tax the advantages of direct taxes are They are a major source of tax revenue 
Many are progressive and help to reduce inequalities in incomes after tax. They take account of people's ability to pay. The disadvantages of direct taxes are Income taxes can reduce work incentives. Taxes on profits can reduce profit available to entrepreneurs to reinvest in their businesses. High tax rates can cause tax evasion. Now let's look at indirect taxes. Types of indirect taxes are Value added tax or VAT Excise duties Import tariffs User charges Advantages of indirect taxes are They are cost effective to collect A wide tax base Anyone who buys goods and services will pay some indirect taxes. They can be used to discourage consumption and production of harmful products. Disadvantages of indirect taxes are The cost of collecting taxes falls to businesses. They are regressive. Tax revenues are less certain because they depend on spending patterns. They add to price inflation. Now, let's look at balancing the budget. In the budget a government sets out its plans for public spending and raising tax revenues for the financial year ahead. A budget deficit is when public expenditure exceeds tax revenue. A budget surplus is when public expenditure is less than tax revenue. An expansionary fiscal policy will increase a budget deficit or reduce a budget surplus. A contractionary fiscal policy will reduce a budget deficit or increase a budget surplus. How about national debt? A government must borrow if public expenditure exceeds public revenue. The total amount of money borrowed by the public sector of a country over time that has yet to be repaid is the public sector or national debt. Taxes will have to increase or other public spending cut to pay rising interest charges if the national debt expands at a faster rate than national income. In the graph shown here, we can see how the U.S.'s debt has grown over time. This is okay, as long as the country's economy continues to grow. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.